This episode is supported by Mountain Khakis. Work hard, play harder. This is a pretty cool framing project and it definitely involves a lot of woodworking. I'm framing artwork that's made on old signs. So I had to make a substrate, a mat, I made the mat out of MDF, and next I'm going to make a frame for everything to fit into. And I need to design the frame so it can accommodate a French cleat. The paintings are going to hang one on top of each other, and so it's really important that the reveal between the paintings is the same when I hang it and always stays the same. And I think the best way to do that is with the French cleat system. It's pretty hard to see the artwork with the lighting, but as I remove it, you can see the substrate. This is cabinet grade birch plywood. Before I attach what I'm calling the mat to the back, I thought we'd take a quick look at it. I have 3 8 plywood at the bottom, 3 quarter inch MDF at the top, and I've sandwiched the two together to get the inch and an eighth depth. I'm attaching the mat to the back with screws and a few nails, and I'll make sure that I have a perfect 3 quarter of an inch reveal all the way around. I'll make sure the mat is aligned to have that 3 quarter inch reveal, and then tack it in place with a 3 quarter inch nail. Next I'll use one inch long screws and you can see I've already pre-drilled and countersunk the holes. I've measured and marked the back and now I'll add a few 18 gauge 3 quarter inch nails. Here's a look at the molding that I'm about to make. You can see I have a line at a quarter of an inch and that represents the space that the back will take and there's still room for what will be the French cleat. That way the French cleat is inside the frame. I'll screw through the back and into the material of the frame. That's how everything will be attached. When I put the molding on the back, it will leave just about an eighth of an inch reveal between the mat and the edge of the frame. And I think that's just a really simple but clean design element. To get started on the molding, the first thing I'll do is rip strips of poplar at just a little bit heavier than two inches. Next I'll cut the molding to a rough length, just about three or four inches heavier than what I need. Then I'll run the molding through the drum sander, taking just a little bit off of each side, removing any blade marks and bringing the molding down to an exact two inches. Now back at the table saw, I'll cut the rabbit joint into the molding to accept the inner frame. I've primed the inner frames, or the mats, and I've already made one of the outer frames. I still need to make one more, so let's go ahead and make that, and I'll show you some of the things I like to do to get nice tight miter joints. First I want to point out my fence. I call this a sacrificial fence. And this really helps to be able to line up the material where you want to make the cut. Now that I've got one miter cut, I'll hold the short point of the miter flush with, in this case, it's the quarter inch plywood back. Can you see how I'm flush here? The inside of the miter is flush with the quarter inch plywood back. I'll continue to hold the molding in place and then move to the other side and mark a line. Now I'm back at the miter saw and when I make the cut, I'll leave the line in just a little bit, maybe a 64th. Okay, well I made that cut a little shorter than I would have liked, but it is still going to fit. It's going to be a tight squeeze. If I have to, I can trim just a little bit off of the backing and it'll be fine. Now that I've got one of the long pieces of molding cut, I'll use this to cut the second one, and then I'll just repeat the process for the sides.
put the frame together, I'm using wood glue and one inch long 18 gauge nails in the nail gun. I'll hold the miter tight. You can see how nice and tight that miter is. If I move the glue out of the way. So the miter's nice and tight. One, two, and three nails. Now I'll use a wet rag and remove any of the glue squeeze out. Okay, great, it fits. It's a little tight, but it fits, so that's perfect. I'll go ahead and fill the nail holes, prime the frame, and I'm just about there. Last thing I'll need to do though, and I can't forget that, is to make the French cleats. To make the French cleats, the first thing I'll do is rip the material to width. For the wall, I'm using half inch plywood, and for the back of the frame, I'm using poplar, and that's just because it was scrap material that I had in the shop here. Now a lot of people like to use a 45 degree angle on a French cleat. For whatever reason, I like to use a 30 degree angle. After I rip the material to width, then I'll set the blade on the table saw to 30 degrees and cut the angle. I decided to use screws to attach the sign or the artwork to the backer board. I'm using screws because there were already holes in the sign where the sign was once attached to something with either a nail or a screw. But I didn't want to use brand new screws because they would just stand out. So I bought brand new screws and then I used my oxygen and acetylene torch to heat them up. I gave them a quick douse with bleach and water. That speeds up the rusting process. I let them rust for a few days, then I cleaned them off and gave them a coat of varnish. Now I'm going to measure down from the bottom of the French cleat to the bottom of the next one and I've got 22 and 7 eighths. Keep up with current projects, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. For vlog style Q&As and shop news, check out my second channel. I'll have links in the description.